The winds of tragedy have crushed your dreams. The waves of sorrow and suffering have drowned your hopes about your future. You are deeply concerned about the direction America is going in, that uh, their rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are being destroyed. And you're right, we are going in the wrong direction. Today, from the pages of God's Word, I'm going to bring you the message of experiencing a new beginning in your life if you're willing to stop being pushed by your problems and start being led by your dreams. You can experience a new beginning in your marriage, in your business, that will bring a financial breakthrough in your tomorrows. You can experience a new beginning in your physical health. Sickness and disease will be broken, can be crushed and conquered in your body by the spoken word of faith. You can have a new beginning in your emotional health uh, created by the fear of the future. Some of you have the problem of resentment over things that have happened to you in the past or bitterness and hopelessness and heartache that's been created by COVID-19. Today, through the power of God's word, you're going to learn how to speak a powerful Bible-based proclamation that will remove mountains of impossibility, that will break the chains that bind you emotionally and spiritually, that will break the chains that bind our country because we are being swept by socialism and abortion please hear this all lives matter there's another element in our lives that we don't think much about and that's the element of faith you think of the faith that you have to have every day you have to have faith that your wife didn't put poison in your coffee this morning you have to have faith in her she might have felt like it but she didn't you have to have faith in the bank when you write a check and sign it and you have money in the bank, you have to have faith that the bank's going to pay it. You have to have faith in the government. When you pull out a dollar bill, now I know it's shrinking, but you have faith that back of it is a dollar, that people will accept it as money. Everything we do is by faith. Now, for example, when I come up on a hill and I live in the mountains of North Carolina and we have a lot of hills, I don't stop my car before I get to the crest of the hill and get out and walk over and see if somebody's coming up the other side on the wrong side. I have faith to believe that the drivers are going to stay on their side. Faith, 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 everything. When you sat in that chair, had you ever sat in that chair before? I bet you didn't pick it up and examine it and put your hands on it to see if it would hold you. By faith, you just sat down in it. You had faith that people wouldn't build a chair that wouldn't hold you. Everything we do is by faith. All right, take the same faith. Put it in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will know who Jesus is. You accept him by faith, and he comes into your life and into your heart, and you know that he's who he claims to be. If the process of faith can be likened to climbing a mountain, reaching the top of the mountain and seeing the breathtaking view in all directions certainly has to be the end result of your prayer life. Seeing the breathtaking view is to practice speaking the word of faith. Too many believers on many occasions stop halfway up the mountain. They start praying about a thing and they get halfway up the mountain. They get breathless and discouraged and they give up. Today I want to take you to the top of the mountain to experience the power of God in your life by speaking the word of faith. Listen to these heroes of faith and the power of their proclamation. Abraham. Abraham was climbing the mountain with Isaac and he spoke the word of faith to his servants. He said, stay here with a donkey. The lad, he's speaking about Isaac there. Isaac and I will go yonder and worship, listen, and we will come back to you. And we, 
two will come back to you. If Isaac is to be sacrificed on the mountain, why is he saying we will come back? It was settled in Abraham's heart that God would either provide a substitute sacrifice or raise Isaac from the dead, which was a powerful statement of faith. When Abraham spoke the words of faith to his servants, we will come back to you. Angels from heaven were sent to earth. They grabbed a ram and tied it by the horns close to that altar where Abraham can see it. And when he was ready to plunge the dagger into the body of his son, he saw the substitute and God had given him the answer because he kept climbing until he reached the top of the mountain. Listen, his answer did not come halfway up. His answer came when he got to the top of the mountain. When you want to get God's answer, Climb to the top of the mountain. Don't give up on the commission. Just keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. When you are trying to get to the next level and you can see where you're trying to get to, there is a ceiling that you have to break through. But in order to get to the next level is because you can see what you want to become. But the only reason you can see the next level is because this ceiling is made of glass. In order to get to the next level, you must be willing to break through the glass. Anytime you break through glass, you are going to get cut. You are going to bleed. The expression, the word of faith, is used by St. Paul in Romans 10 and 8. The word is near you in your mouth. Say that, in your mouth and in your heart. You speak the word because the word has the power of life and death in your mouth. Victory or defeat, success or failure, depends exactly what comes out of your mouth based on the faith that you have in the Word of God. Your desire is not enough. Your wanting it is not enough. A prayer request is not enough. God is looking for the Word of faith. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall ask what you will and shall receive it. Listen to me, you get nothing until you ask for it. The Bible is a very specific book. Give us this day our daily bread. This is who, this is when, this is what in one sentence. Your proclamation releases the authority of the living God into the battle that you're facing, into your health crisis, into your business, into your future, into your emotions that you're, that you're presently experiencing. Your proclamation makes demons tremble. The proclamations make barriers to blessing crumble like the walls of Jericho. Your proclamation releases the authority of God Almighty to crush the adversary. There is a miracle in your mouth. There is a miracle in your mouth and it needs to be turned loose in faith believing based upon the Word of God and you will see it happen.